8 over 9 plus 4 over 16, 1 over 4, 32 plus 1. Oh, you know. <clears throat> 32 plus 9 is 41. Yeah, you're right. It must have been that vacation I took. 41. 41 over 4, 10. Right? Like that? So 1.025 times 10 to the 8. And if I want to add, I should add the, the direction of it is what? I hat, right? It's to the right. Is it right now? Is it correct? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right, 10 to the 10th. Okay, now let's find the force on that charge if it's at the point 1, 3. 1, 1, 2, 3. By the way, what would the force be? Let's before we go to that point, let's do this point. What would the force be right here? I just want to see if the force is greater near one of the charges than versus somewhere in the middle. Let's see plus two. Let's say if the charge was at the point negative two zero. What would the force on it be? So I want to compare them. Uh, that would be k times 4 times 2 divided by 1 squared plus k times 2 times 2 over, uh, that would be 4 plus 2, that would be 6 squared. So what would that be? Right? Like that. Eight and eight and one ninth, right? Eight and one ninth, which is eight point one one k. Eight point one one k. That's much bigger, huh? Hmm? Where did that come from? Oh, because if it's at negative two zero, this distance would be one, and this distance would be six. Yeah. So what I'm trying to see is the pattern, what's happening. So th this force is 8.11k. It's much bigger because, you see, this one is barely over 1k. It's a little bit over 1k. So the force is much bigger as you get towards one of the charges. How about if I go to this point right here? How about if I go to the point positive 3, 0? So this is for the force if it's on negative 2, 0. And the force when it's on positive 3, 0 would be k times 4 times 2 over uh, 6 squared again, right? Plus k times 2 times 2 over 1 squared. So that one is not as big as this, because this is 8.11k. It's not as big as that, but it is bigger than that, because that one is just barely over 1k. So that means out of the here, the, the greatest force is here, somewhere near the plus 4. The, the second biggest force is near the vicinity of the 2 Coulomb charge. Okay, And then in the middle, it gets weaker. 
because uh, you're away from either charge. So the greatest force is near the closest to the larger of the two charges. The other way to say that is the electrical field configuration of the two charges. There's more lines coming out of the four than going into the two. That's the reason. Since this is twice the charge, there's more lines coming out of the, there's twice as many lines coming out of the four as going into the two. So the concentration, the density of the electrical field configuration around the four Coulomb charge is twice as dense as the two Coulomb charge. That's why the force is more, you see? And here, the electrical field is diverges away from each other. It's divergent. So over here, it's weaker. The force is weaker, therefore. OK, so if we go to the point 1, 3, we should see that the force is even weaker than here, right? Look at the E-field configuration. Here, there's a greater concentration of E-field. As, as you get over there, the field diverges away from each other. So the, the strength here should be weaker than here. And if you get even farther, it should even be weaker. OK? So how do we find the total force on that guy? Well, now it becomes a vector problem, right? We have to find the force of this and this. That's F2Q, uh, uh, 4Q. And then find the force between this and this. OK, so let, let me start. Let me do a clean version of this here. Start fresh from the beginning here. OK, so this is positive 4Q. This is uh, negative 2 coulombs. This is negative 3, 0. This is 4, 0. And the point is at 1, 3, right? So write the force of each one. Draw the force of each one. This guy repels that along the line connecting the two, right? Along the line connecting the two vectors. So that's, we could call that F4, uh, or we could, you know what, we could just call F1 for a simple case. And then this guy rip, attracts it, right? So it's in the towards the line connecting the two. It's probably stronger. I, I don't really know if it's stronger here, F2. So what we got to do is we got to break up F1 into its x and y components, break up F2 into its x and y components, and then combine their x components and their y components. So F total x is equal to F1x plus F2x. OK? And then f total y is equal to f1y plus f2y. f1x, OK, what we do for this case is we define an angle theta and define an, alpha, an angle alpha just so that we can take the x component of f and the y component of f. We don't actually have to find what that angle is. We're just using it as a means of getting the x component of f. So we say f1x is equal to f1 cosine theta. f2x is equal to f2 cosine alpha. And similarly here, f total y is equal to f1 cosine theta. F2y is going to be negative, right? The y component of F2 is going to be down this direction, F2y. So since it's negative, we subtract. 